from Wisp Politics in Madison. You're listening to Capital Chats. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Wisp Politics Capital Chats podcast brought to you by Spectrum. I'm Adam Kelnhofer in the office in Madison, joined today by my colleague Kate Morton to talk about an interview she just did with Wisconsin Conservation Voters Government Affairs Manager Peter Burris. Uh, so, Kate, you and uh, Mr. Burris talked about PFAS, is that right? Yeah, that's right, Adam. We actually talked about a bill that recently passed the Senate to address PFAS contamination. And Peter told me about some of the concerns that Wisconsin conservation voters has with the bill. But let's just get into the interview. All right. Hi, Peter. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Kate. Yeah, so today I just want to talk to you a little bit about the PFAS bill that passed recently in the Senate. As you know, this is something the bill authors say would help to combat PFAS contamination in the state, but a lot of environmental groups like Wisconsin conservation voters still have concerns about it. So maybe you could explain to me some of those concerns. Yes, so we are opposed to the bill, and I guess to start, there are kind of some key principles for action that we think about when we're talking about anything related to action on PFAS. So first of all, we want the health impacts to be front and center and the the, the impact that PFAS are having on, on communities across the state. So when we think about the scary health-related impacts like challenges getting pregnant, birth defects, heart disease, testicular cancer, and the folks that are living on five-gallon water jugs across the state and are brushing their teeth, washing their dishes, watering their plants, mixing their baby formula with those five gallon water jugs because they can't trust the water that's coming out of their tap. We want those folks to be front and center in in whatever solutions we develop. So, um, you know, the second big thing is that we want to make sure the funding goes out the door quickly, that we can agree on just getting money out and um, without any hurdles and loopholes that would benefit polluters. And third, we want to be focused on standards and you know drinking water standards, surface and groundwater standards, long-term prevention and phase out of the non-essential use of PFAS. So our concern with Senate Bill 312 is not that it's not doing enough, but actually that it would move us in the opposite direction of where we want to be. And that's a concern that we're hearing from impacted community members, environmental partners, public health partners. And This is largely in relation to the newest iteration of the bill. So the bill that passed the Senate floor is kind of the fourth version that we've seen. And I know there's been a lot of conversation around the limitations that the bill would place on the Department of Natural Resources. Those limitations are particularly concerning in conversation with the newest iteration of the bill, which broadens eligibility under the Innocent Landowner Grant Program. And this is really the the key bad piece about this bill that we that we see. So under the newest version, anybody could qualify as an innocent landowner, and then in that qualification be exempt from DNR's enforcement authority. So if we move to a to a system that where that's how we handle pollution, PFAS pollution here specifically, that is a massive polluter, polluter loophole, and it runs the risk of us shifting all PFAS remediation to taxpayers. Um, We believe that those who are responsible for pollution should be responsible for the cleanup, and particularly when we know that there are so many Wisconsinites who are dealing with the impacts and the healthcare-related costs associated with with the harm that PFAS can cause. So, you know, in addition, some of the our our consistent feedback and opposition to this bill has been that, um, you know, also the newest version would force private well owners to compete with commercial and industrial properties because of this broad eligibility. And um, finally, that there's there's no guarantee that the funding that was passed through the budget into the the PFAS trust fund would actually go out the door because of this bill. There is no allocation in this bill. And so the Department of Natural Resources would still need to go to the Joint Finance Committee, request funding for these new programs, and hopefully get that funding. So this bill doesn't necessarily speed up the process through which we can get funding to impacted communities. And so we have been, you know, advocating for changes. We were really encouraged that the the Senate Democrats introduced an amendment that would have addressed these concerns and happy to go into that in detail if it's helpful. Um, But that broad eligibility under the Innocent Landowner Grant Program that would qualify polluters in the way that 
is in conversation with the limitations on the, the DNR and and removing the DNR's enforcement authority, that's just a non-starter for us. Yeah, thanks for sharing those concerns. I do want to get into, you mentioned some of the possible changes to the bill. As you know, this is awaiting a vote in the Assembly. Are there any things that you're pushing for in particular, maybe some things that we saw in the Senate amendment from Democrats? Yes. So Senate Democrats introduced an amendment that would remove those limitations on the DNR, um, cut off the problematic intersection between these two pieces of the bill, the the, um, limitations on the DNR and the Innocent Landowner Grant Program, um, remove that broad eligibility on the Innocent Landowner Grant Program, prioritize private well owners. They included language that specifically says, hey, you know, lots of folks could be eligible for this money, but we want to make sure that it first and foremost goes to private well owners who are a third of our state. Um, and then finally, it it specifically, the amendment would have specifically tied this bill to the trust fund. We've heard from the bill authors over and over again that they want to see a structure for how the funding would go out the door. If this bill is going to be the structure, then why not just tie the money to that structure? Why still keep a separate process? Um, because It's just going to delay relief to impacted communities. Okay, yeah. I also wanted to ask, you know, obviously the amendment from um, Democrats was rejected. So if the bill does end up remaining in its current form, would you be asking Governor Tony Evers to veto veto it? Yes, we would. Okay. Now, are there any of concerns? Obviously, it's really important to be able to address PFAS contamination. Are there any concerns that this $125 million that was set aside for addressing that issue wouldn't be used and be able to get to these impacted communities? Yes, yeah, so well, I was certainly hope that we could find a different path through which the funding could be used. And the good news is that it's allocated, it's in a trust fund. Our understanding is that it isn't going anywhere. So I'm hopeful that we can set this bill aside and focus on where there's common ground. Our impacted communities, they they need the money, right? We need to get them the money as quickly as possible. They know what they need to do to begin addressing this issue, right? And so I'm hopeful that we can we can find an, another process, but you know, as currently structured, this bill is not it. And in conversations with the bill's authors, what have their responses been to these concerns? That's a great question. And I, I will admit that I am a little surprised. We we connected with staff in, in both offices, the bill authors last early, early last week. Um, and they seemed relatively responsive to some of the concerns that we had, particularly with regard to this intersection between the two parts of the bill. Again, the, the limitations on the DNR and the innocent landowner grant program and the broad eligibility and the ways that could let polluters off the hook. Um, so heard some good feedback, had a good conversation, and then we saw an amendment on Thursday of last week that didn't include um, any any things we had been advocating for and, and that brought to the table with feedback from impacted community members. Um, we did see that that amendment, I don't know what, what in particular specific to that amendment was influential, but we saw that that amendment last Thursday did move Wisconsin manufacturers and commerce from opposing the bill to being neutral on the bill. And then obviously the bill was scheduled for this week, uh, this week, Tuesday. So I am i haven't reconnected uh, with with those offices to see, um, to, to learn more about that final decision making. But um, yeah, certainly have been advocating for those changes. Okay, well, is there anything that you want to add about this proposal before we kind of wrap it up? I think I just want to reiterate that this is the fourth version, right? And so there have been, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. We were really encouraged that the second version made some really great improvements. Um, Concerned that the third version went in the opposite direction and concerned that the fourth version is really, really in the opposite direction and would would severely inhibit our ability to, to get our arms around this issue and support impacted communities across the state. So, um, you know, this, these changes have moved pretty quickly. And so um, I think just want to underscore that, that loophole because of the intersection between these two parts of the bill and just how dangerous it is. Okay, well, thank you, Peter, for joining me. I really appreciate it. 
Thanks, Kate. Good to talk to you. All right, Kate. Thanks for bringing us that interview. If our listeners want to stay up to speed on the PFAS issue, they can head over to our website at wispolitics.com, where we'll be tracking this bill's progress through the legislature as it has yet to see the assembly. And we'll also be sure to keep the website updated on any other developments related to PFAS. But for now, I'm Adam Kelnhofer. I'm Kate Morton. Thanks for tuning in to WisPolitics Capital Chats, brought to you by Spectrum. Spectrum.